getting off the sunset and I am as far as I can go legally at the moment because I've got a five kilometer radius from my house where I'm allowed to travel during lockdown even though the curfew is over I'm still under lockdown and I am exactly at the five kilometer radius point down near the Werribee River if I go that way um, across the river there are literally lions and apes and everything else at the zoo but um, here I am on a road I've never been on before and it's a lot of fun so I'm not sure what this week's video is going to be about but I thought I'd do this as a preamble while the crows fly home to their nests and I'll let you know that um, I have got out I have gone on a little bit of an adventure but I've done it legally and safely and I've waited until the sign says I can do it so I will catch you guys later and in the meantime be safe okay back to the man cave for the actual movie that I'm going to talk about I just thought I'd put a little intro in there to show you what's happening around here and how things ain't as bad as I make out sometimes so once upon a time in Hollywood in the 1970s black exploitation was a thing and movie studios large and small wanted to get in on the game make some bucks and just play it for as long as it would play some producers created a movie called cleopatra jones and they were going to sell it to american international pictures there was a handshake agreement about it and then they went and gave it to warner brothers and signed up for a lot more money than american international pictures would have given them so american international pictures being the nimble little b studio that it was decided that they were going to get a movie out before Cleopatra Jones and therefore produce the first female black action movie with coffee rather than Cleopatra Jones and starring Pam Greer. Pam Greer started out as a receptionist at American International Pictures in the 1960s and in the early 1970s they put her in a bunch of women in prison movies that were filmed in the Philippines. I'll just get my list here and tell you what they are. The Big Dollhouse, Women in Cages, The Big Bird Cage, and a weird little movie which was kind of an island of Dr. Moreau kind of effort called The Twilight People. And in Coffee, they decided to give Pam Greer a leading role. She was great. She was statuesque. She was striking. She was a fantastic presence on screen. Not at the start of her career, she wasn't a fantastic actor. But in this one, she really has to dig deep to give us a kind of death wish female black character. And that's what makes this movie so very, very interesting. There are a few different aspects to it that are very new. The protagonist, Coffee, is a professional black female. She's a professional nurse. She works in a hospital. She's got a bit of a tragic backstory while she was away learning how to be a nurse and, and going to nursing school. Her sister, her much younger sister, got involved with drugs and became addicted and was given some bad dope and ended up in a vegetative state in a nursing home. And we see a bit of that in the movie. Coffee, she's trying to live her life. She's got a boyfriend who's a professional politician. She's got another guy who's interested in her, Carter, who was a cop. And so she's just trying to kind of muddle through. And then suddenly she has a break, a psychotic fugue kind of break. She goes after the pusher who gave her sister the drugs, the guy that got her onto drugs in the first place, and going up the chain of command, she basically kills a lot of them. Now, this is a, an interesting movie for a number of reasons. First one is, it was written and directed by Jack Hill, who was the guy for a lot of certain kinds of exploitation movies. He made Spider Baby, he made Switchblade Sisters. He's a really interesting exploitation director, Jack Hill, and he gave full value in every movie. He made the movies shot well, it's framed well, and it gives us, for the first time, a black female protagonist who doesn't take shit from anybody and goes the distance. She does some really horrible things and really self-damaging things to get her revenge on behalf of her sister and later on on behalf of other people about whom she cares. This movie really does sit squarely in that grindhouse 1970s exploitation genre. There's gratuitous nudity, there's sleazy pimps in pimp clothing, one of them played by Robert Doki. It's just got a whole bunch of that kind of 70s drive-in movie vibe about it, which is really kind of cool. If you're not into that kind of thing, it may take a little while for you to get into it. 
but it's very much of its time. It's got the usual waka chicka music in it. And uh, yeah, I like it. I rewatched it yesterday. It's on Tubi. So if you go to Tubi.tv, you can stream it for free. And I didn't get any ads in it either. So Tubi's doing pretty well in keeping the ads to a minimum on their product. And I really appreciate that. There are some hidden gems on Tubi. If you want me to do more of that particular streaming services, hidden gems in the future, let me know. I'm happy to do it. But with coffee, you get a strong female protagonist. You get some um, shotgun action. You get some um, beating up action. You get a bit of car chase action. You get a few stunts. You get everything that you need. Uh, one of the main antagonists in this movie, a mafia guy called Vitroni, is played by Alan Arbus, who played the shrink in MASH. He was the psychologist who kept coming around and talking to the doctors in MASH. He was also the husband of Diane Arbus, the fantastic 20th century photographer who really changed the way still photography was done in the world. So he, it was interesting seeing him in there. I'm not sure he's a particularly gifted actor, but he does get his nuts shot off with a shotgun. Uh, there's some, the car stunts are really good. A car barges into a house in one stage. Um, and underlying all of this, you've got a really troubled female protagonist. She doesn't know why she's doing these things. She is in a kind of fugue state and is just on a rampage and can't stop herself. And she follows the trail from one bad guy to another until ultimately she gets rid of a lot of them. And then we see her right at the end of the film kind of drained and lost walking along a beach. It's just a fantastic film. It's the movie that really started Pam Greer along with the subsequent film to this, which is very much a revenge kind of movie as well, Foxy Brown which I recommend you check out. The production values on Foxy Brown are a little bit higher, but Coffee was made on about a $500,000 budget, made back four million, so they definitely made a profit on it. And if you're into Pam Greer, if you're into 1970s exploitation, I definitely recommend that you check out Coffee. You can do it for nothing, and it's a very good print as well, which is something that Tubi sometimes has trouble with. Some of the product they put out is kind of VHS transfers. Most of it though is pretty good. And coffee, it's a really, really nice print. So you got no issues with that. Now, just to continue with the channel, I will be doing horror movies all of October. This video was supposed to come out yesterday, which is the end of September. But um, it got delayed for various reasons. So October, we're doing horror movies. I've already got a few of them. I've got some on order that I wanted to do, but I've got a stack of them here, which I'm clumsily grabbing, which um, I'm only going to flash them briefly so you can see the kind of stuff that I'm going to be doing. Two a week, so there's going to be eight movies all up over the month of October for Halloween. And there is a quick little glimpse of the first six of them. So looking forward to that. Um, it makes the formatting a lot easier for the channel. I can just go, okay, this is the next movie I'm going to do this one. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Some of these movies I've seen, some of them I haven't seen, some of them I haven't seen for a hell of a long time. And I'm looking forward to revisiting them. They, they go across the range of horror, so there's gonna be a bit of that going, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. So thank you very much for watching. As usual, if you enjoyed this, think about subscribing. About 50% of my viewers subscribe, and I'd like that to be more. I'm heading up to around 800 subscribers at the moment. I wanna to get to 1,000 so I can start doing things like live streams and um yeah and i really appreciate the support i've got so far and the interactions i have comments on the channel so yeah thanks a lot for that the things are going really nicely here and i'm enjoying it a hell of a lot so anyway and before we start october and all the horror movies look after yourselves follow the science wear a mask stay safe watch some good movies watch some bad movies definitely watch some exploitation movies because they are vulgar pleasures and I will catch you next time. In the meantime, um, if you'd like to, you can donate to the channel via Patreon at patreon.com slash paleocinema. And I'd appreciate it if you did. It's only a few bucks and it does help keep things going here. Anyway, in the meantime, take care of yourselves and I'll catch you next time.